The Mutual Audio Network, where relaxation and imagination blend. Listen responsibly. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. The 4077th and All Better Audio presents... Hello, I am Line uh, um, Alan Smithy, and welcome to Alan Smithy Theatre. I am so proud to have my name associated with this series. Take it away, boys. What? Tell them what the skit is called. Oh, uh, uh, um, never likely to bother Oscar. <laughs> That was terrible. Fire him immediately. I don't care who you slept with. Get out. Listen to them, the children of the night. What a music they make. Right. Good. Yeah, um, a couple of things, Mickey. Look, can we get these bloody wolves out of the room, please? I can't hear myself think. Mrs. Lupine. Sorry about this. Uh, No problem, Mr. Satchfield. We have a wolf problem. Uh, They've been hanging around my office for days. No idea why. Mrs. Lupine. Yes, Mr. Setchfield. Oh, Mrs. Lupine. Can we get rid of these wolves, please? They're beginning to smell. Actually, I... uh, I I think that's me. uh, the, The smell... I get nervous during uh, auditions. Whatever. Just lose the wolves. Certainly, sir. Here, boys. Oh, that's better. Thank you, Mrs. Lupine. Now, Mickey, um, where were we? Um, um, I had... Just auditioned for the um, role of Count Dracula, and you were going to give me some notes. Ah, yes. And I think straight away, Mickey, that I've identified the problem. Oh, dear. Um, uh, What would that be, Mr. Satchfield? The problem, Mickey, is that the part you're auditioning for isn't Count Dracula. It isn't? Nope. Oh, um, is it uh, Van Helsing? No, it it isn't Van Helsing, or Count Dracula, or Hawker, or Renfield, or any other part of Bram Stoker's 19th century vampire opus. The reason being, Mickey, is that we're not making Dracula. Ah, I see the problem. Indeed. Now, the production we're doing is a bit different. You're you're familiar with Shakespeare's King Lear? Am I? Heck, Lear is every actor's dream. It's a marvelous play, and uh, any actor would love to play it. Indeed. Lear is an epic, heart-wrenching drama of raw power and elegiac beauty in its imagery and language. It soars to the very heights of human artistic endeavor, and its characters and plot are utterly sublime. We're doing the opposite of that. Our production is pointless, tired, and entirely without merit. The writing is terrible, the characters are paper-thin and unmemorable, and the plot is utterly predictable. Oh, well, in that case, I'm not interested. The money's good. Is it? No, the money is terrible. In fact, there isn't any money. Well, uh, uh, now I'm definitely not interested. Sorry. Oh, come on. What else have you got lined up? What other acting jobs do you have in your diary? Um... Exactly. 
This may be the worst production you're ever likely to appear in, but at least it's work. Oh, okay then. Uh, I'll give it a go. Excellent, <laughs> good man. Now our production is a comedy sketch, apparently. Um, I've read it and I didn't spot a single joke, but never mind. The sketch is all about a desperate, hopeless actor who attends an audition. He starts off auditioning for the role of Dracula, but then is told that he's actually auditioning for a comedy sketch. There's some pointless stuff about King Lear in there, and and a bit of business about some wolves. Sounds interesting. Um, let me see the script. Here you go. It's written in crayon. <laughs> I know. It's got. Ugh, ugh. Drool all over it. Oh, I know. Is that from the wolves? No, from the writer. I see. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'll do my best anyway. Um, <coughs> listen to them, the children of the. Na- Wait, let's do this properly. We need the wolves to start you off, Mrs. Lupine. Mrs. Lupine. Mrs. Lupine! Uh, Perhaps she's busy? I'll just go and see what's keeping her. We need those wolves. Um, I'm afraid we'll have to do without the wolves for a moment. Uh, They're busy. Eating. And uh, Mrs. Lupine? Uh, She's busy too. Being eaten. Uh. And now, a word from our sponsor. Ha! I'm Fred Bovine of Fred Bovine's Used Cattle Emporium and Rendering Boutique. Do you want to purchase 1,000 head of cattle but don't want the hassle? and announce of purchasing your herd at one of those uh, uh, hardy tardy top of the line cattle lots. Hell, you know they'll try to talk you into purchasing on the coating and all them bells and whistles that cost an arm and a leg. It don't make the beef taste any beefier. Hey, I'll throw in the cowbells for free. So come on down and speak to one of my friendless staff and get a real deal and save you some money. Austin, are just as good, even if it is last year's month. And don't forget to bring the little cowpokes. There'll be plenty of fun for them next door at the Raider plant. There's enough stone rocks and chainsaws for all your little ones. And if you come on Tuesday nights, it's surf and surf for everybody. My wife Jolene's extra spicy takes chili. And brother-in-law Vern's special the moonshine loaded barbecue sauce will make your mouth water. So visit us today. We're located eight miles north of the proposed Trump border wall and gambling casino. Just follow the Hillary Pinatas line up all along the George W. Bush Highway until you come to the giant neon dance car. That's us. We'll make sure you get a real deal. And that ain't no ball. Now, my dear, if you would please join me here on the casting couch. <laughs> Gee, boss, I didn't even know you cared. <laughs> a wig 
You stole that from the prop department. But, boss, this is going to be my big break. <laughs> I hate to see a young girl, but whatever, cry. Just say your line, and we'll never speak of this again. Uh, next up, uh, the monster mashup. Now get off my lap and take out the trash. <laughs> sure, boss. <laughs> and take that bikini back to wardrobe. Okay, okay, right, right. Uh, I would like to call this board meeting to order. Gentlemen, gentlemen. And lady. Oh, I do apologize, Mrs. Lupine. Although, I, I would appreciate you taking these wolves out of the boardroom, please. I can't do that, sir. They are members of the board. How did they get to be members of the bloody board? You've heard of the Wolf of Wall Street? Of course I have. Jordan Belfort. Who is that? He was the Wolf of Wall Street. It was a big film and... I'd better take these wolves out of here. I'm sorry. I can't believe you guys lied to me. Oh, and, and by the way, uh, the new leg looks... Almost natural. Amazing what they can do with prosthetics these days. Now, gentlemen, uh, we need to discuss the next film this studio is producing. Uh, doing a movie with the full cooperation of Universal Pictures to use any of their famous monsters is a monumental feather in our cap. But we need to decide which picture to produce. Weatherly. I've always been a fan of Frankenstein and Dracula. Maybe a remake of... No, no, it, it's not broad enough appeal. Crenshaw. Well, maybe the mummy. And he's fighting Frankenstein and Dracula. Team-up stories are all the rage. X-Men, the Avengers, Justice League. I, I see where you're coming from. A, a monster team-up film. Brilliant. But I, I don't think we're thinking big enough. It needs to be colossal. A huge film. Money is no object. No matter what we spend, we'll rake in 20, maybe 50 times more. Name some other monsters we can use. The Wolfman. Thank you, Mrs. Lupine. The Invisible Man. Oh, oh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Good, good, yes. Uh, Mr. Jacobson, you've been unusually quiet this whole time. What would you add to the conversation? We need to add some sex appeal, maybe a, a love interest. How about a huge musical number with chorus boys and dancing bears? Maybe even reenact those fabulous uh, Esther Williams water ballet scenes. But instead, bear with me, instead we'll cast well-muscled marines in skin-tight uniforms that are barely able to contain their huge pectorals and glutes, and then we'll have them all start making out and um i i see where you're coming from let's um let's save that thought for um when we remake the gay de force and the musical number for the gay caballero sure enough i i get what you're saying mr setchfield so let's see what we have so far we've got every famous universal monster at our disposal but it still doesn't have any real punch. I was picturing Stallone and Zac Efron in a daddy-slash-boy love triangle with, um, Daniel uh, Craig. Uh, um, Never mind the, the love interest. Uh, that could be added later. So what do we have? Frankenstein, Wolfman, Mummy, the Invisible Man, Dracula, and the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, but that's just too long to put in the title. We need a catchy name. The Monster Mashup. Good, but we need permission from Bobby Pickett's estate. Oh, may I suggest... <sighs> oh. I was just going to say, we should call it... The Franken Wolf Mummy meets the invisible vampire from the Black Lagoon. Jacobson, I, I could kiss you. No, that's okay. I'm flattered, but I'm straight. 
Mrs. Lupine, uh, we need to talk to the head of Universal. We have our pitch for their monster movie. Yes, sir. Right on it. We need to get our costume designer working on ideas immediately. Color palettes, that sort of thing. My roommate is our costume designer. I, I can let him know tonight at dinner time. Uh, okay. Uh, well, we'll need the best script writers we can find. And, and musical score by John Williams. And, and special effects by Industrial Light and Magic. And, and of course, we can ask uh, Michael Bay to, to pop his head in and do something. Okay, everyone, we need quiet on the set. More fog on the moors. Cue the wolves, Mrs. Lupine. Here's your big chance, boys. And cue Dracula. M- Mickey, that's you. Listen to them. The children of the night. What music they make. I... Cut! There are no bloody cell phones on my set. It was Crenshaw. Oh, uh, sorry. Sir, Mr. Setchfield, you'll want to take this. Hello? (laughs) Mr. Takanawa. Yes, we did, but... Oh, I see. Really? Oh, that's terrific. Thank you. Attention, attention, everyone. I have news. This changes everything. Well, everybody, I believe I have made a masterpiece that will win an Oscar for certain. Roll the preview, boys. Never before in the history of motion pictures has anyone dared to bring to the theater a film of this magnitude and scope. He was beaten by the werewolf, wrapped in bandages, and brought back to life by Dr. Victor Frankenstein. But I can't see you. I know. I drank the potion that Dr. Jack Griffin created. It rendered me invisible. It is why I now live in the Black Lagoon. No. No. It can't be. Super Colossal Pictures presents The Frankenwolf Mummy meets the Invisible Vampire from the Black Lagoon versus... Godzilla in 3D IMAX sense around and smell o vision. Where is everybody? They left when Godzilla arrived. Um, I'm going to be fired, aren't I? Yes, Mr. Setfield, you are. Uh, I spent $350 million on the biggest flop ever created. Yes, yes, you did. Oh. Have you fed the wolves yet today? No, actually, I haven't. Oh, I just remembered how my predecessor left the business and why we keep those wolves at the studio. Oh, well, it was nice working with you, sir. Sir, (laughs) sir, we finally got clearance to use King Kong. Wait, I have an idea. It's Godzilla! And King Kong too! Oh no, we are doomed! And they are making love! We saved the picture, sir. The studio has a hit. I don't know. I still say it's too gay. Wait for it. I added one more thing. But wait, folks. We aren't done yet. Kim Kardashian 
as the 50-foot woman. And she's naked. A hit. So I guess Patty Lapone was too busy? I might have been able to get Liza, or maybe even RuPaul. Caitlyn Jenner? And to announce the Oscar winner is Jack Sofalot. And the nominations are. Never Likely to Bother Oscar, starring Victor Aurelius, Elise Krawick, and Jeff Niles. <laughs> Opener, Bridge, Sequence, and More, starring Steve White. <laughs> the Monster Mashup, starring Alex Gilmore, Ted Winskis, Matt Weller, and Sarah Golden. And Suddenly Susan, A Tale of Castration Gone Wrong, starring Susan Serrated and Lance Boyle. <laughs> and the winner is... Suddenly Susan, A Tale of Castration Gone Wrong. Accepting the award is Alan Smithy. The hell I will. Visit our website at the 4077th.blogspot.com. This has been an all better audio production. This production was set together by, by the 4077. Making audio, audio sound, sound all better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. There! That's how long twenty seconds are. The Center for Disease Control recommends you wash your hands for at least twenty seconds as often as possible. We don't think about it a lot, but more germs are transmitted by the hands than by any other source. So keep them clean. Soap and water for 20 seconds, and you'll help prevent the spread of COVID-19. And maybe some other nasty stuff as well. This was a public service announcement from the Mutual Audio Network.